What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we have an absolutely massive guide for how to level up as fast as possible within the brand new Forsaken expansion in Destiny 2. Now, you may notice that this video is coming out a couple days before Forsaken, but the reason for that is because this deals with a lot of stuff you want to be doing the second Forsaken launches, and the way you want to play in the first few hours of the game. So this video is meant to let you guys hit the ground running and level super optimally with Forsaken to get raid ready when that new Last Wish raid drops on September 14th. There is so many tips we're going to go over, so let's just get started. But just before we do, guys, if you're looking for amazing gaming headphones, including the ones I personally use, the A40s, I've partnered with Astro, so check the link in the description down below. Get a discount code to save some money and help me out. Definition of a win-win right there. All right. Let's talk just optimization. So, right after Forsaken comes out, go to the tower. You're going to need an organization and preparation phase. Some of these things can be done before Forsaken comes out, but here are the things I'm going to recommend you do in the tower. Firstly, quickly organize your inventory. This is something a lot of people are going to forget to do, but make sure you don't have, you know, only two free slots for helmets and for gauntlets, and for energy weapons, or whatever, because you're going to be gaining a ton of loot, a ton of blue loot. And you want this blue loot at least in your inventory, because remember, when the game drops anything, when the game drops uh, some sort of loot, it bases the light level on what you possibly could be, not what you're wearing at the time. So you want to have, in your inventory, your highest blues. If you only have one helmet slot available, you don't want a bunch of those helmets going to the Postmaster. And if you don't have a lot of free slots, you're going to be making a lot more trips to the tower to deal with the Postmaster and all of that stuff, and that's going to waste a ton of time. Clean out your inventory, you don't need more than like three weapons and three armor pieces for each slot. Next up, you're going to grab every bounty available to you. And remember, some of the NPCs have brand new bounties. Hawthorne is going to be offering clan bounties and is definitely worth going and grabbing those. Moving on from there, you want to utilize your beneficial consumables. So pop your fire team medallion and pop your three of coins. If you're with a fire team, remember that fire team medallion does stack, I think, up to two times. So make sure two people have those active to just let you level up as quickly as possible. After you've done that and you're gaining an experience bonus, then turn in all completed bounties. Because you can stock up on bounties right now for the next couple of days, like go and do the strike bounties, never turn them in, and hopefully when Forsaken launches, those bounties won't get deleted, you can turn them all in after Forsaken launches and potentially level up a couple times. Moving on from there, you want to ensure that you have an experience boost ghost equipped. So, if you do have one of the exotic ghosts that has all experience gains increased by 10%, that's fantastic. But if you do have Earth or Nessus experience gains increased by 10%, that should be actually good too for what we end up recommending. You want to have all this stuff because there's a lot to level up with Forsaken. The leveling cap is increasing to 50, and the power level cap is increasing all the way to 600. But it's very, very important not to overlook the leveling aspect, the getting to level 50 aspect. I mean, we actually saw recently this week that if you go and do the Mars Flashpoint and you get Forsaken Loot, and it's over 400. So if your Forsaken Loot drops at 403, it says requires level 35. You have to level up five times just to use stuff three power level higher than what you are right now. So that means a ton of the emphasis is just going to be on straight leveling, gaining experience, not necessarily gaining loot and power level. So once you're done this preparation phase, the next thing you're going to want to do, and this is huge, is not do the campaign. I put out a tweet earlier today saying I was doing this video and I had so many people saying leveling is simple You just do the campaign as soon as it comes out and then you just do this and this That is one of the biggest mistakes people are going to make do not do the forsaken campaign Why well 
Like I said, it's all about leveling, and the campaign is actually not a great way to level up and gain loot. The loot gains are really, really poor. Like, doing one strike, doing one public event will give you a, a shower of loot, whereas doing a mission within the campaign will not. So you're just not going to gain the amount of loot and levels as you would doing other stuff. Also, at the end of every single campaign in Destiny 2's history, there's been powerful loot. There's been a loot item that actually scales to your level and is a power level beyond that level. It was an exotic at the end of the main campaign and it was other stuff as well for the DLC campaigns. Forsaken is almost guaranteed to have this same thing going on. So if you rush and do the campaign, you're going to get a piece of powerful loot that is irrelevant extremely quickly. You're gonna miss out on that potentially powerful loot drop. So actually, I would highly recommend going to Earth or Nessus and farming the crap out of public events. This is going to give you a massive level and power level boost before you head into the campaign. Now, how long do you want to do these public events for? Well, there's three different things you can stop at. Number one, you can just have an allotted time frame. I know the new DLC has just dropped and people are gonna wanna play it, so you can say, all right, an hour of farming Earth or Nessus, and then we go into the campaign. And just that hour will give you a substantial bump. It's still definitely worth doing. You can also just farm public events until you hit the soft cap, until you see that loot stops dropping at a certain light level, like maybe it stops dropping and at 525 and you don't get anything past 525 you know you've hit that soft light cap so the only way to advance it is now to get powerful loot and then you can go into the campaign get the powerful loot at the end of the campaign and then you can just focus on powerful loot for the rest of the time it's, it's much more you know in terms of time consuming it's much more optimal or you could literally just level up until you reach the maximum level of 50 just doing public events. I do think that you'll hit the soft cap before you hit level 50, but if you do hit level 50 just doing this right away, again, all your time, all your focus is then gonna be on powerful loot, and you want to have that be the case because Actually, there's going to be a rotation after four days on the Friday, so you want to be doing all the different powerful loot options every single day. Also, powerful loot rotates daily. There's certain things that offer powerful loot, and again, they appear for one day and they're gone the next. So you want to be able to be on top of those, and hitting that soft cap as quickly as possible is how you're going to do that. Now, in terms of farming these heroic public events efficiently, what are the best ways to do that? Well, we debated this a ton between me and a bunch of other hardcore players, and I do feel like the most optimal way is to have a fire team. Now, doing it solo is definitely good. If you want to do it solo, I'm not necessarily here to convince you otherwise. And doing it solo lets you do a public event, activate heroic, obviously, and then once you're done that public event, you reload in that same area and it'll load a new instance because you're solo and you can double dip, sometimes triple dip on public events. You can do like three of them as other lobbies of people are com completing them. But if you're in a fire team, you can have two fire team medallions going at the same time, so you get more experience overall. Having those extra teammates makes it so much easier to do heroic public events. Like, you're doing them in probably half the time or less than doing it solo, potentially, especially if you have blueberries that don't know what they're doing, and you will because the game is now free on PlayStation. Also, you can have one player in your fire team dedicated to grabbing patrols, kill patrols, or the triangle patrols, you have to kill certain enemies and stuff, scavenger patrols or whatever they're called, and those patrols are going to give you experience. So if you can have two people focusing on public events and the third one going out and grabbing patrols and trying to do patrols as quickly as possible, the amount of experience from consecutive activities that's gonna roll in is going to be phenomenal. Now, something else you may want to do is to almost complete powerful gear milestones. For example, if there's a milestone to do five strikes and then you get powerful gear, well, do four of them. So those four strikes will get you gear and will level you up. And then once you've reached the soft cap, you can go back and just do the last strike and get that powerful gear really quickly. But in terms of leveling, I don't think that's as, as efficient as just farming the heroic events. All right, now moving on from there, we have some general tips. Number one, if your weapons or armor is trailing behind in your overall power level, that's a good time to go to a faction and turn in mats. For example, 
if you are, let's say hypothetically, 470 power, but you've got a helmet that's just lacking behind, the helmet is 450 still, and everything else is like still going up, or the helmet's, you know, 460, then that's a great time to, let's say, go to the tower really quick, and then go to the Vanguard vendor, turn in a bunch of Vanguard tokens, get some loot until you get a helmet. And then that helmet, as long as you're below the soft cap, it will be, you know, 475 or 471 or something like that. And you're going to get a substantial boost because that piece of gear was lacking so far behind. Now, another big tip is that, again, your main goal here is to reach that soft cap, and once you do reach that soft cap, once normal loot is not dropping past a certain level, you switch to powerful loot, but even in the realm of powerful loot, let's say the soft cap is at 525, and you are 550, so you're beyond it, but you have something really lacking behind. You have a 530 helmet this time. Well, what you can then do is still turn in faction materials because you basically drag the soft cap 10 power levels below you. And what that means is that once you get beyond the native soft cap, the soft cap is going to raise to pretty much always be around 10 power levels below your level. So you, you notice right now, if you are 370 and you turn in loot, you're pretty much always getting loot at 360, right? It doesn't actually help you level up, except for the circumstance I described. If you have a piece of loot that's even more than 10 power levels below you, you can still turn in, you know, faction loot and get something that is still the 10 levels below you soft cap, but it will benefit you. Again, in the 530 example, when you're 550, it's going to go up to 540 and you're still going to get that jump. So it can be worth doing that in those particular circumstances. And lastly, remember again that loot drops on the highest power level you could potentially be. So if you have, you know, your highest weapon in the vault or on another character, loot should still drop as if you had that highest weapon equipped. So if you are doing this with multiple characters and you switch characters, you don't actually have to transfer your weapons, or at least you shouldn't. You may want to just to make sure everything goes right, but it's all going to drop based on the highest power level you could potentially be if you were wearing all of your highest power level gear, you know, from the vault or other characters or that you have in your inventory or wherever. And speaking of multiple characters, it is likely still going to be worth leveling up two characters. Getting one to the soft cap and then doing as much powerful gear as you can and then switching over to the other one. And again, because you can transfer those weapons or, or it should count those weapons anyways, the other one is going to get a little bit of a boost and going to hit that soft cap while still having weapons above that soft cap. And then when you do the powerful um, rewards on that second character, you can go even higher, third character even higher. But there's going to be so much stuff in Forsaken and there's going to be so many milestones that rotate daily and so many ways to get powerful gear. And the climb is higher than it's ever been to all the way to level 50 and power level 600. In terms of just time constraints, it might actually be more worth just balancing between two different characters and not three. If you have unlimited time, three is definitely right. But if you are kind of getting behind on leveling and trying to juggle all three characters and then, you know, it rotates after those four days and the powerful loot goes away, well, you've missed out on quite a bit, actually. And so, guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.